Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a fair bit of polish updates. We're going to be making the AI's head rotate towards the player as well as the hand placement be a little bit more realistic and not pass through the torso and arc a little bit more when it's closer to the body and then when it's running it'll be a little bit more up and down with its movements. And then also we're going to be modifying how the physics is actually applied to the rollerball in order to make it a bit more snappy to make it a bit more realistic and naturalistic. So hopping into Godot if we jump over over to the cultist prefab we've got a new addition which is the head ik we're going to be attaching its root bone to the spine 004 and the tip bone to 005 there's actually one more bone after this but it just controls the top of the head and it looks really weird if i enable it so we're not going to enable it now down here we did something similar to the chest container we did a head container with the head target out a little ways so the reason for this is because the torso is going to be right where the center of mass is the putting the head target out in front of it means that as we rotate it the head target is out there which just results in a better look so let's go ahead and jump into limb placement controller we're going to make a couple modifications to make this work all right so first off we're going to add the head ik solver and that's of type skeleton ik 3d and then we're also going to add a reference to the head target container as well as a lerp speed for the head rotation now down here on the ready function there's a couple things i want to add that are a little bit unrelated i do want to randomize the limb step delay timer as well as the current limb index on ready that way we go ahead and get a different starting point for each of the ai i had noticed when i got a crowd of them they tended to sync up their hand movements and so doing this just resolves that and down just below the chest bone id we're also going to go ahead and implement the head ik solver and tell it to start down here below the update body positions we're going to go ahead and add a function call for update head position in the physics process we can scroll down here to around line 100 and that's where we'll get started so first off we're going to create a new function called update head position we're going to go through this a bit like what we did with the update body positions so first off we're going to set the head target containers global position to the chest target containers global position then we're going to create a new vector 3 which will be the target look at point and this will be the global position of the enemy body player target if the enemy body player target is not equal null if it does equal null then we're just going to go ahead and use the global position of the chest target container plus the last velocity this will just get us a point out in front of the ai later on we'll probably implement some sort of randomized looking around function next up we're going to create a vector 3 for target rotation and it's going to be using the global transform dot looking at which like i explained before creates a new vector 3 creates a new transform 3d and it's going to be using the target look at point and for the up vector we're going to go ahead and use vector 3 dot up if the dot product of that with the target look at point subtracting the head target container dot global position is greater than 0.99 so basically we're going to use vector 3 dot up if the chest target containers y axis is directly aligned with the look at function that is basically the player standing on top of the chest target of the enemy if it is not the case, then we're going to go ahead and use the y-axis of the chest target container. Then we're going to use the basis.get Euler function, and that's going to get us a target rotation that we can actually lerp towards. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and handle the lerping. Now, someone did bring up the, the absence of using quaternions as impacting my rotation. This is kind of a workaround to not using quaternions, as I do not have a full grasp on quaternions yet, and I didn't want to teach y'all on something that I didn't have under wraps. And quaternions are a little bit of black magic, so I'm not exactly experienced with them. Definitely have to go over them at some point. But for now, we're just going to use the lerp angle function, which will handle any gimbal lock. That'll prevent the bugs that you can experience when lerping rotations and we're going to be lerping from the global rotation of the head target container towards the target rotation using delta multiplied by the head rotation lerp speed and finally we're going to go ahead and assign the interpolation value of the head ik solver this is how much it's going to be leaning towards the ik versus the actual animated position and we're going to be using the negative of the chest target container z axis that's the forward vector and use the dot product of that and the target look at point subtracted from the global position of the head target container that's a vector pointed towards the look at point the reason why we do this is that way if the ai is rotated towards the player then we want to interpolate into the ik based off of how much they're looking at the player so if we're kind of off to the side we're going to blend out the ik and if we're behind the ai we're not going to look at the player at all and then we're just going to add one and divide by two and that's going to remap negative one to one over to zero to one which is the interpolation range now we're going to go ahead and change up the hit normal instead of using the vector 3 dot up we're going to be using the y-axis of the chest target container this just makes sure it's in local space then also up here on the kickoff velocity we're going to do one minor change and subtract 
all of the desired velocity modification from the enemy body.linear velocity. This will get a vector that is the difference between the two. It means that applying this impulse will be a very snappy result and it'll modify the velocity very directly. Now, combined with the changes that we do to the limb, this will actually make things a little bit better, but for the time being, all it's really going to do is speed up the AI. So let's go ahead and hop over to the limb placement controller, and we'll set that IK solver, as well as the head target container, and set the HUD rotation lerp to two. We can go ahead and save that and hit play and see what it looks like. All right. Now, obviously the limb placement's not very good at the moment, but as you can see, the head is now looking at the player a little bit when it's in front of it, and when it's behind it, the head kind of goes down and it's no longer looking at the player. All right, so that'll be good for that. Let's go ahead and modify those limbs. They weren't working exactly like I would like them. So first off, we're going to create a couple changes to the Bezier curve. We're going to be adding a origin hit normal as well as a target hit normal. We're gonna use this to rotate the limbs based off of the ground. This will be a very subtle modification, but later on in the level, there will actually be a couple places where there will be dialogue or what have you, and the AI will be sitting still. So we are going to be needing this later on. Over in the limb.gd, we're going to add two new variables for the target point offset minimum distance, as well as the control point offset minimum distance. This is going to be to keep the target and the control points respectively away from the center of mass. So the control points, we're gonna have them bump out a little bit further but the target point we're just going to put it to like 0.5 that way if the hand starts to move across the axis when it's traveling say it is walking and the arm is off to the left when it is the right limb it will go ahead and bump it out to the right hand side of the center axis so we're going to go ahead and modify the physics function here. Instead of just having the current curve.lerp, we're going to be passing that into a function that doesn't exist yet called adjust target point. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and make that function. All right. And just inside, we're going to create a new variable of type vector three, and it's going to be the target point, which we're passing in localized into the chest target container. And you'll see why in just a moment. So right after this, we're going to create an if statement to say, if the limb is currently either the left hand or the left foot, then we're going to set the x-axis of this offsetted world position, which once again is in local space to the chest target container, to the minimum of it or negative target point offset minimum distance. And the reason why we do this is so that it will never pass under that value close to zero, which means it'll never get too close to the center line. This is specifically only when it's actually moved. When it's sitting still on the ground, the AI can move up over the leg because the leg is grabbing onto the ground. Then we're going to put in an else statement. So this means it's on the right-hand side of the or so. If so, we're going to use the maximum between the X and the positive target point offset minimum distance. Then all we have to do to make this work is convert it back into global space from the chest target container and equal target point to it, and then just return target point. So as you can see, we go ahead and pull that, and then that becomes our new current target location. This will help specifically when the AI is turning from keeping those limbs from collapsing in upon themselves. Now, there are other changes that we want to make. So I realized, thanks to the help of someone in Discord, that the magnet was in global space when it was supposed to be in local space and pretty much everything having to do with the skeleton in Godot is in local space and as a result I was just getting weird results with the limbs pointed in odd directions especially when I got far away from the origin point. So we're going to go ahead and set that into local space of the skeleton and next up we're going to handle the actual foot placement or the hand placement on normals of grounds. What we're going to do is use the look at function but instead of using the up axis of the chest we're going to be using the up axis of the normal and leaving the look at function as it were. That way if you set your hand on the side of a wall and set like a 45 degree angle, the up axis will be at a 45 degree angle, then the look at function will rotate around that. That'll give us a fairly good result. So first off, we need that normal. So we use the origin hit normal and we lerp it to the target hit normal based off of the current lerp value. That's whatever movement we're currently already doing. That way we blend from one normal to the next. If we're currently traveling, if not, we're just going to use the target hit normal because we assume we're at the destination. Next up, we go and get the difference between that and the actual look at function. We're going to use this for the actual deciding in the up vector. So let's go ahead and remove all of that. And we're going to add in a little bit different. So we're going to say that the up vector for this look at function is the Z axis of the chest target container. So that's the back axis. If the current difference is greater than 0.99, since we're using the absolute function, it will always be positive, And that'll mean that it is either directly up or down in relation to the normal of the terrain that he's standing on, or if the normal is zero or a proc. 
box. I got this specifically when I was flying through the air. Sometimes the normal axis would still be passed back, but for some reason it would come out as zero. So either way, we're going to use the we're going to use the back vector of the chest target container. If not, we're going to go ahead and use the normal vector. Now all that's handled. So let's go ahead and go down here to where we're initializing the step. There is a couple things that we want to do differently here. First off, let's go ahead and create a new if statement. And all it's really going to check to see is if these are the feet. And we're going to say else and say this. Now, if these are the feet, we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here. And we're just going to invert this vector. Now, the reason for this is if it is the feet, then we want to have the vector that we're using for the velocity that we're imparting onto the body from this limb to be based off of from the foot towards the torso. That way, would they push off with their foot? And if not, then we're using a hand and we want it to be pointed at the target location. That's where the hand currently is from the torso. So that way we're pulling in the direction. Due to the way we're changing the velocity calculation, this will make the randomized movement a little bit more convincing as the body pushes back and forth as it's moving towards the player. So we're going to go ahead and save that. All right. So we're still not done yet. If we scroll down here to get new curve, when we are too far from the target and we're just picking up the hand and moving it because we're, we can no longer reach the target, we're going to go ahead and set the current target location. That's where the hand should be to the location of the actual physical representation of the hand. The reason why we do this is I realized that sometimes it would just get stuck in a loop where it couldn't reach the location where the hand was in time because it takes time for the current target location to move. And so this just kind of bypasses that and cleans it up. Now down here, just below all of the variables that we're assigning, we do want to go ahead and set those normals. We already have the hit normal of the target data, and we're going to use the target data, target hit normal of the previous curve for the origin hit normal. And then we're going to do something slightly different. So instead of just returning new curve, we're going to be adjusting the control point. So let's go ahead and create a new function for doing that. The new function will take a new curve of type Bezier curve. And first off, let's just go ahead and return that new curve. And then we're going to make a couple modifications here. Basically, all we're going to do is anytime the control points are too close to the center of mass, we're going to push them outwards. This is going to make the curve's target point and origin point remain the same, but the curve itself will bend outwards away from the body. This gets a little bit more of a natural movement. So first off, we're going to create a new offsetted world body position. It's just going to be the enemy body global position. So that's the center of the roller ball. And we're going to set the Y axis of that to the target location control Y axis. And I'm going to say if the target location controls distance to the offsetted world body position is less than the control point offset minimum distance, then we're just going to set the target location control equal to the offsetted world body position and a vector towards the target location control from that position normalized and multiplied by the control point offset minimum distance. This is just going to clamp the target location control vector to a distance minimum away from the torso. We're going to do something slightly different for the origin control point. Now the origin is where it's moving from. So if we have hit surface, that is we're moving from a location that was on the ground and we are kicking off velocity, then we're going to make the origin location control a little bit different. We're going to take the origin location, the place where the hand currently is, and we're going to add to it a vector pointed from the target location control. So that's the location control of the place we're moving to back towards the origin location, normalized and multiplied by the control point offset. This is going to get a control point that is back down away from where we're actually moving. And what this means is that the hand will ever so slightly when it first steps off, move backwards and then forwards. And this will get that kick off motion. Then we're going to put in an else if, and we're going to say, if that is not true, and the distance to the offsetted world body position is less than the control point offset minimum distance, then we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did with the target control point, And we're just going to make it its minimum distance away from the torso. That's pretty much it on the adjust control points. So let's go ahead and save that. We need to go ahead and change a couple variables though. All right. So over here in the limbs, we're going to change a couple things. We're going to be setting the enemy body desired velocity for the hands down to something like 0.2. This is going to give a little bit more randomness to the hands, but they're going to be pulling. So it'll be kind of back and forth. And then over here as well, we're going to set this over to maybe 0.5. Now the target point offset minimum, we're going to set to 0.3 and 1.5 respectively on the hands. And on the feet, we're going to set it to 0.4 and 1.5. Now the target point offset, that's the distance towards the center of mass that the feet or hands are allowed to move to when arcing from their origin to their target location. And with the legs specifically, we wanted to have give a little bit of a wider berth just so that we don't have the weird collapsing of the 
the eyes that we had before. And then the control point offset minimum, I just found 1.5 does work pretty good. We can bump this up later if we want the hands to flail out to the sides a little bit more. All right, and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what it looks like. And that's a little bit more snappy of a movement. And if we shoot them, they don't move quite as bad as they used to. While it's not perfect, as you can see, it does look a fair bit more convincing than it did in the past. Now, I still want to revisit this specifically when it comes to making the limbs handle better when they're in the air. And then also we're going to be working on making them crawl on the ceiling, things like that. But for the time being, this will work just fine. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.